Now, there are new questions. President Obama facing these questions on his handling of Benghazi. Some critics now calling the president out and asking, where was the commander in chief the night of the attack? Charles Krauthammer from Special Report. Where was the president on that night? We've all seen the video and the pictures. Well, the picture situation room of Obama on the night of the Osama raid. And everybody looks at that. Oh, yeah, he was really involved in that. Show me a picture of where he was on the night of the attack in Libya. Give me a timeline. Who did he talk to? What did he do? And lastly, the talking points, which are a fiction. And compounded by the fact that the president now says, I said it was a terror attack on the day after. That is not true. Even the Washington Post has said today it was absolutely a falsehood. Well, Stephen Hayes, senior writer, Weekly Standard, Fox News contributor. Steve, good morning to you. Morning, Bill. Um, what would explain why an accounting or what we call in our business a TikTok of the president's schedule or his whereabouts or account, why would that not be out at the moment? Well, certainly one reason it would not be out is that the White House doesn't want it out. Um, now, I have to say, the White House did put out one picture of the president meeting with some advisors, Joe Biden, Dennis McDonough, among them. Uh, in the White House, we think that picture was from about 7.30 on the evening of September 11th. But Charles Krauthammer is exactly right. There's a lot we don't know about where the president was, about what he was doing. We know that he had a, a phone call with Benjamin Netanyahu that night that may have lasted about an hour. Do you know uh, what time? We don't know what Steve, happened do you know afterwards. what time that phone call took place with Benjamin uh, Netanyahu? I think we know that it was before 8 o'clock, uh, and I, I'm, this is speculation, but I think it was in the sort of 5 to 6 I time Israel's frame. seven plus hours ahead of Washington, right. D.C. So you're, right. you're talking 1 o'clock in the morning for the Israeli prime minister, right? Late, right. All right. Now, um, what Charles was talking about is something that Dick Cheney had to say the other night with Sean Hannity, uh, and, and that is how the administration framed the um, the, the deep involvement the president had the night of the bin Laden raid, and yet this doesn't seem to follow the same pattern on 9-11. And what the vice president's point was is that every time September 11th rolled around, we were at the ready. And then he went on to be quite critical about how this administration was not at the ready. What was your response to that? Well, look, I mean, for a long time, you had the administration trying to downplay the significance of the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks and these, this t attack in Benghazi and the protests throughout the region. At one point, I remember Jay Carney in a, in a White House briefing, I believe it was on September 14th, might have been the following week, in fact, scolding a reporter who said, in effect, weren't there extra preparations taken because this was a 9-11 anniversary and Jay Carney in effect said you're conflating two things on the one hand there are these attacks on the other there's this anniversary well of course I mean everybody understood that this that that was the reason for the attacks that was the reason for the protests elsewhere um, I want to talk about these talking points now because apparently there's different reporting and you, you were first on this about 10 days ago but Politico is out with a report just moments ago suggesting the the administration was going to put uh, surrogates on the Sunday talk shows this past weekend to talk about Benghazi and talk about the IRS. Uh, uh, but apparently they scrapped the idea and quoting now because talking points are what got us into trouble in the first place. What do we know about that? Well, it's not the talking, it's not that the talking point process is, uh, is a problem. It's the content of the talking points that's a problem. If you provide the truth in the talking points and you tell your surrogates and, and encourage people who are supporting you to go out and tell the truth, then the talking points shouldn't be a problem. You should be able to post your talking points on the White House website if they're actually true. The problem with the talking points as it relates to the Benghazi attacks is that they weren't. And you had a version that started with the CIA and then 24 hours later after a scrubbing, after going through an interagency process, ended up looking not much like the original talking points that started with the CIA. So the problem there is the content, not, not I got the fact you. that In the are talking 30 points. seconds I have left, what appears to be developing now, what appears again, is this battle for positioning on behalf of the CIA, the White House, and the State Department. And there was a report that came out late last night about these talking points. How is this story now developing? You know, wh wh where is it headed, do you believe? 
Well, I think the next big question is what information will the administration provide? You've had David Axelrod, among others, this morning saying that he wants the White House to put all of the Benghazi-related emails out. I think he's right. You've had reporters calling for that. Uh, I think there's a lot of pressure on the White House to put those out, coming from Congress, but also from, from other parties. So I think that's the next big step. And then we have other things that I think we need to see. The presidential daily briefs, even if they have to redact them. The memo that was sent by the CIA station chief in Libya on mm -hmm. September 12th describing the attacks. Uh, maybe redacted versions of FBI interviews of the survivors. Those are all the kinds of things that the White House could provide if it's truly interested in getting the entire story out, which is what the White House still to this day claims. Okay, th Steve, thank you. Uh, some suggest that's CYA. Uh, to our viewers at home, it is BYA because you asked. Hemmer at foxnews.com is the email. I want to talk about anything that's happening now. We're also on Twitter. Follow me there at Bill Hemmer. Lines are open right now to take your questions. Just need one line and a question mark. That's all. Lines are open.